The nation we will cover in today's guide, Lan Fong, is unique in that you cannot play as them, form them, or release them in the 1444 starting date. They are incredibly hidden, and because of this, the majority of players have never heard of or seen this bizarre and unknown Bornean Chinese Confucian Republic. Other guides to play and unlock this nation are outdated, and contain additional steps that are ultimately unnecessary if you want to form Lanfang as fast as possible. In this guide, absolutely no DLC is required, and the techniques we will cover allow you to play Lan Fong and Iron Man shortly after the campaign start. My name is Alzbo HD, and in the following video, join me as we uncover the secrets of Lan Fong, with a step-by-step -step guide on how to play as the rarest nation in EU4. Before we start, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons over at Patreon who voted and selected this video for the monthly Patreon poll. When you're ready, grab your Baiju and accept Confucius as your lord and savior. Let's get started with the guide. Given that Lanfang is a Chinese republic, it follows logically that we will begin our guided adventure in East Asia. In the 1444 starting date, Lanfang does not yet exist, so we will select Ming as our nation and jump right into it. Before I'm pausing the game, go ahead and go into the diplomatic screen and release every possible nation as a vassal, besides the Cantonese nation of Yue. By releasing all of the nations of China, we will ensure that the Ming Dynasty is neutered, and neutralized as a potential threat in the future. Afterwards, we will exploit the estate mechanic to demand extra military, diplomatic, and administrative monarch power. Once this is done, we will develop the province of Wauchu in our far south with all of our monarch power available to us, as this will allow us to culture convert to Hakka easier later on. After this is accomplished, we will release Yue so that we can choose to play them as a vassal state. Go ahead and check your leader. Every time you release and play as a vassal state, the leader is randomized, and may be terrible or quite good. If your leader has below average stats, usually below 3 in each category, you can at this point start over from the beginning of the guide. Once situated and in control of your country, we will state the territory of East Guangdong. Now that this is accomplished, we will assign several estates to the stated territory. After our stated provinces have estates, we will now demand administrative, diplomatic, and military monarch power. With the extra monarch power this provides, it's time to culture convert the province of Macau to Hakka culture. This province will take some time, normally about 5 years, and we can hire several level 1 advisors in the interim to speed up our monarch power generation. Now let's go ahead and unpause the game, and wait until Macau has been culturally converted. While waiting, it is possible that Ming will go to war with one of their neighbors, usually Arat, but we don't have to help them. After 1450, all of the truces that protect Ming from their subjects will expire, and at this time we should prepare for our independence war. If Ming is still at war with Orat or any other neighbor, wait until they are finished before moving forward. It's time to continue to the next step of our guide. Once our truce with the Ming Dynasty has expired and they are in peace, it's time to make as many alliances as possible. Given that all vassals are heavily disloyal to Ming, an independence war will break out very soon, with or without us and it's better for us if we are the war leader. Go ahead and ally every large Chinese nation, especially those that border you and those that border Ming's capital Beijing. It's okay for us to go over the diplomatic limit for this war, as we can remove our numerous alliances afterwards. After you've made your alliances, declare an independence war and boost your stability to zero. This war will be really really easy, and should only take a year or two, as we will heavily outnumber Ming and any of the vassals that you've chosen not to ally. In the war, the only thing that you need to occupy are the Zhang cultured lands to your immediate west. This is incredibly important, as we will need at least 20 development of Zhang territory later in the guide for us to be able to form Lanfang. With Ming's capital occupied and the war practically over, go ahead and sign a peace that guarantees you and all of Ming's vassals independence, while also taking the Zhang territory. The example provided in this recorded footage is all that you need. Immediately after the war, dissolve all of your alliances, except those that are close to you and large enough to be useful, so that you can gain diplomatic power again by being under the relations limit. With our independence secured and the Ming Dynasty in ashes, it's time to switch our primary culture. Now that Macau is Hakka, we can go into the diplomatic window and promote it to an accepted culture for 100 diplomatic monarch power. Once this is done, we can accept it as our primary culture with a cultural shift for another 100 diplomatic monarch power. With our new primary culture, Ming defeated, and the annexation of at least 20 development of Zhang culture lands, it's time to move on to the next step of our guide. With our independence war taken care of, we can now zoom ahead and fast forward to 5 times speed. In about 10 years or so of waiting, depending on how strong your starting ruler is, you will reach admin tech level 5, and here you should pick the expansion idea group. Once you have 400 admin mana saved up, you should then invest in the first idea, which will give you a colonist. 
As soon as you have the colonist idea, go ahead and check your advisor screen. We need to fire level 1 diplomatic advisors until we can hire a navigator, which will give us enough colonial distance to colonize the province we need to form Lan Fang. If you are short of money by swapping these advisors, you can always take loans or debase your currency. We won't be playing Yue long term, and any damage to their economy will not affect our future nation. Once you have a navigator advisor and the colonist from Expansion Ideas, go ahead and send a colonist to the province of Pontinanak in Borneo. In the meantime, it's important you stay up to date with technology, and do not invest any further monarch power into ideas, stability, or anything else as we don't care about our current nation. When we ultimately play as Lan Fang, we will inherit the technology level of our current nation. So to that end, I recommend exploiting estates as often as possible and saving up enough monarch power, so that we can force develop an institution later on in the guide. Once Pontinanak is colonized, it's time to move on to the next step in our guide. With our first and most important province colonized, it's time we now shift our culture so that we can incite separatist rebels to gain Lan Fang cores. To do this without cultural shifting out of the Chinese cultural group is normally quite difficult, and the other guides I've read advise losing a war to Brunei on purpose to give them the province of Pontinanak. I tried doing this and it doesn't work at all, as Brunei refuses to take the province in the most recent patch. So don't waste your time or throw away your campaign by following this outdated strategy. Instead, we will take a far easier path, and assuming you've taken the recommended Zhang territory in your independence war against Ming, you're all set for this part of the guide. When you're ready, go ahead and remove all of your estates from the East Guangdong region. Once the rebels are taken care of and the estates are gone, state your western Zhang provinces and move your capital to the highest development Zhang land you own. Once you move your capital, you can destate the East Guangdong region, which will push Zhang culture to 100% of our stated culture, and will allow you to promote it to an accepted culture and culturally shift to Zhang for 200 diplomatic monarch power. As soon as you shift your culture to Zhang, which is in the Southeast Asian culture group and outside of our previous Hakka Chinese culture group, unpause the game for a month. After the next month processes, Lan Fang separatists should now be agitating for liberty from Pontinanak if you followed all of the steps correctly. As soon as you see them, go into the rebel government screen and accept their demands to become an independent nation. While we wait for our five-year truce with Lan Fang, continue colonizing territory around the new nation so that we will have more future territory to expand into. Make sure to build up a spy network in Lan Fang as well so that we can declare war on them once our truce timer has expired. Skip ahead at times 5 speed and when the truce has expired with Lan Fang, it's time to move on to the next step in our guide. Now that the sun is out, it's time to declare war on Lan Fang and show them the art of war. Your troops should easily outnumber and outmatch the one province minor and when you inevitably siege down their capital, go ahead and fully annex and core Pontinanak. With Lan Fang cores now in place, we could theoretically re-release Lan Fang immediately and play them as a vassal, but I highly recommend we improve our situation a bit to give our new nation some serious advantages. To that end, ensure that you are ahead in time with all three technology groups, and save up at least 2,400 monarch power. Once you have enough mana, we will use them to develop Lan Fang's future capital, and forcibly spawn the Renaissance Institution for our new nation. Go ahead and dump all of your spare mana into developing Pontinanak, and, once you've reached about 37 development, the Renaissance Institution will spawn locally. With the province far more developed, it will provide a fantastic foundation for Lan Fang, and also provides you Asia's only source of the Renaissance Institution. At this point, you're probably ready to release and play as Lan Fang, but I recommend moving your troops back to China and deleting your boats first, so that your future independence war will be far easier. You can also take out loans and seriously sabotage Yue, but if you screw up the nation too badly, you might end up being annexed by an Indonesian nation even before you can declare your independence war. Regardless, once you deleted your boats, developed Pontinanak, and spawned the Renaissance, Go into the diplomatic screen and release and choose to play as Lan Fang. It's time to pat yourself on the back and take a swig of some rice wine. You are now in control of the rarest and most unknown nation in EU4. Now that you are in control of the Confucian Unicorn, it's time to cover our situation. Unfortunately, by forming the country as a vassal, you will not be a republic, and will instead be a princedom monarchy. This is rather unfortunate, as, just like before with Yue, your nation's ruler will be randomized and might be absolutely terrible. If your leader is inbred and incompetent, I'd recommend pressing Alt F4 and reloading your Iron Man save, so that you can release Lan Fong again and get a better ruler. All hope is not lost though, as you can become a republic later, either via decision if you don't have the Dharma DLC, or by the final government reform become a republic if you have Dharma. With that out of the way, go ahead and build your army to force limit and recruit a few transport ships. 
Skip ahead at 5 times speed until your truce timer with UA has expired. At this time, if you have the El Dorado or Conquest of Paradise DLC, you should ask as many nations as possible to support your independence. This isn't required, but is very helpful, and will provide you allies once you declare war on UA. Regardless, with or without allies, insult UA until their relations have decreased a bit, and declare war on them. Next, raise your stability to zero and siege down the neighboring provinces you've colonized from before. You can easily defend your capital from your overlord at this point, they don't even have boats, but if you have allies or if you're feeling frisky, I recommend landing troops into China to invade Yue so that we can take some Hakka culture provinces in the peace deal. If you can take Macau and or Waichu, plus the Bornean provinces, you're in a fantastic position to make peace with Yue. With independence secured and potentially even provinces in mainland China, it's time to move on to the final part of our guide. Now that we are a strong and independent Hakka nation that don't need no Yue, our position is still tenuous and quite vulnerable. I highly recommend making alliances with the large nations that surround you, including those in Southeast Asia and mainland China. In terms of ideas, the defensive idea set will already be filled out completely, which is quite awesome. For our second idea group, I'd recommend abandoning espionage and replacing it with expansion, so that we can continue colonizing Malaya and the Indonesian islands. From this point onwards, the choice is yours regarding expansion paths and playstyle choices. In my Iron Man run, I chose to invade Brunei and annex most of Borneo, which is a solid choice if you can invade them with allies or while they are busy fighting a war with neighboring Kutai. From this point on, you can easily expand into the Philippines and the rest of the Spice Islands to gain ridiculous amounts of trade income. At the same time, I highly recommend watching the situation in China, as by this point the Ming Dynasty is a running joke, and the Mandate of Heaven is open for the taking. Regarding your religion, Confucianism is pretty bad, but if you choose to keep it for role-playing purposes, you can harmonize Islam, Hindu, and the Buddhist religions around you to maintain your religious unity. For players interested in decent religions though, I personally recommend inciting religious rebels and converting Lanfang to Islam or Hindu, which is easy, given that there are provinces of both faiths located on your starting island of Borneo. If you are interested in the other rare, unknown, and downright unicorn nations of Europe and Versalis, I also recommend checking out my video covering the top 10 most obscure nations in EU4, located in a card at the top right of your screen. Good luck in your campaign, and may the spice flow with you. We've reached the end of the video, and I'd like to thank everyone for watching. A special shout out goes to my patrons on Patreon that voted for the video guide and support the channel on a regular basis. What EU4 videos would you like to see in the future? Let me know in the comment box below. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a like or a comment, as these will really help the channel grow. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.